Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is acceptance activities. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If this is the first executive series video that you've seen, please go back and check out the introduction. Look at the video description below for links to any supporting information and an outline of the material. In each of these videos, we have a standard agenda, which covers four main areas. You can see those in the progress bar. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to get the three bonus questions. Our requirement, acceptance activities, comes directly from 820.80 and ISO 1345 sections 7.1, 7.4.3, 7.5.10, and 8.2.6. Acceptance activities in five words. Testing product throughout product realization. In this requirement, we really outline everything that's required for testing during the product realization process. So this requirement tackles incoming inspection, in-process inspection, and final release inspection. We have to have procedures outlined for each one of those different inspection activities. When it comes to final release inspection, we have to ensure that all of the requirements outlined within our DMR or our device master record are fulfilled and everything is signed off before product release. When we're doing the inspections, we will generate records or test records. And there are minimum requirements for each test record, the testing that was done, the date, who did the testing, what was the result, and what equipment was used during the actual inspection activity. All test records will either be part of or point to the DHR for the product they are related to. So how do I know this is working? Well, first, I have procedures defined for incoming, in-process, final release inspection. Second, I maintain my test records and those test records meet all the regulatory requirements and they point to the actual DHR for the product. Third, Test failures are fed into my non-conforming product process. And then finally, all inspection and testing activities are completed before product is released. So how do I know this is not working? Well, first, I've lost my test records. They're either incomplete, they're not signed off, or they're lost, or they're damaged. Second, the test records, they're not linked to the device history record. Third, testing isn't complete, and product is released to the market. And then fourth, I have test failures, but they're not entered into the non-conforming product process, so they're not addressed appropriately within the quality management system. Now for those three bonus questions. First, how do we ensure that the test records are included to or linked to the DHR? Second, what type of review do we have to do to each lot, batch, or serial number for the DHR? So what type of final review do we do for the DHR before the product is released? And then finally, how are test failures handled at incoming, in process, and final release? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. If you have any questions, please send me an email at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.